talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear viewers, to another live episode of Viewers Pulse, and I'm your host of the program, Junaid Da. Dear viewers, I'd like to begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives us these opportunities uh, to work and to, to gather uh, these good deeds. And also, I'd like to begin by making mention of the blessed name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, Viewers Pulse is your program. We are live coming to you for a whole hour. In this hour, we have effectively two main goals. Viewers Pulse likes to review, analyze the programs that have gone on uh, over the last week and see what are the highlights, what are the heights of these programs. And at the same time, the second aspect of Viewers Pulse is to look into the future programs. What are we going to prepare? What would you like to see uh, on Huda TV? And if we have something new, we'd like to bring it forward and get your views uh, on that as well. So dear viewers, Viewers Pulse is your program. And in this hour, uh, we would like to hear from you. We'd like to hear your views, uh, your questions, your queries, your comments, uh, anything that you have. Even if you have criticism on any of the programs, any of the speakers, anything, feel free to bring it forward and just make sure it's positive so that we can get off on a good footing. But feel free to come forward and feel free to interact with us and to express yourself freely. We want to make Huda TV uh, the best channel as we can. We want to bring forward programs that are really catered to your needs. We want to bring speakers that you enjoy and benefit from so much because we are uh, a Dawah channel. We, our objective on Huda TV is to propagate the authentic teachings of Islam based upon the Quran and the authentic teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And we can only do this first and foremost, of course, with the blessings and the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, with your support, with your prayers and with your contribution. So help us to help you to make this channel uh, the best uh, that we can. Now, dear viewers, how can you do that? How can you engage with us? You're probably thinking uh, there are a number of different ways in which you can communicate uh, with us here. First and foremost, and the most easiest and the most live way to do that is by picking up your phones. You will see our numbers running across the screens right there. You've got two numbers, so you can call any one of those two numbers uh, and give us your contributions. And I would love to hear uh, what you have to say. I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the programs and of the TV? What do you think about what you see? Do you enjoy it? Do you benefit from it? And more importantly, give us hints, give us ideas, give us clues on how we can improve ourselves and go to the next uh, level. So do engage with us on the phone. If you're calling from outside of Egypt, then please don't forget to use the code which is inside uh, the brackets at 002. And we love to hear phone calls from all over the world. We've had phone calls coming from Africa, from Nigeria, from Saudi Arabia, from Pakistan, from Europe. So please do call us and we love to hear all of your contributions. Now, uh, dear viewers, if you are unable to get to the phone for whatever reason that is, you can always engage with us uh, via email, and you can see our email address there, right there on your screen as well, and that is uh, pulse at huda.tv. So do engage with us via email. We do have a team uh, dedicated to answering your queries or your questions via email, so please engage with us. If it takes some time, just be patient, inshallah ta'ala, and we will get back to you uh, in due course. Now. Another mode of communication, and this is probably the most interactive or the most fun way of getting in contact with us, and that's through Facebook. If you go up onto Facebook and you type in Huda TV, uh, you will see our official uh, Facebook page. And really, it needs no introduction, but that page is full of activities, full of reminders from the Quran, from the Sunnah. It's so uh, colorful that you can benefit from it all times of the day. And most importantly, you'll find on our Facebook page a beautiful link uh, that will take you to our official Huda TV webpage, and that is uh, Huda TV. Now, why is it so important that you visit our Huda TV 
uh, official web page number one it's because of the itinerary you can see the timings of all of our programs seven days a week 24 hours of every day you can watch the live programs and you can watch the reruns which come on uh, later in the night and I'm going to go through some of those with you today as well uh, so you can get uh, familiar with the timetable so do go to our official page and just to remind you as well that our Facebook page um, some time ago has reached over 300,000 likes which is amazing which is absolutely fantastic we are so happy and we are so proud of your contributions and right? you are the ones who uh, encourage us to do more work so we want to go further we want to go higher we're not satisfied with 300,000 we want to hit uh, half a million inshallah ta'ala but it's your help it's your contributions it's you spreading sharing and liking the page that is really making uh, this channel successful and don't forget you know when you do these things it's not a matter of a page or a matter of a channel no it's a matter of ajr the good deeds that you are promoting something good you are promoting something authentic and inshallah that somebody will be affected somebody will be influenced in a positive way of course and you will get the ajr of that uh, and benefit from it as well so dear viewers uh, another mode of communication and that is through Twitter if you type into Twitter um, Huda TV channel you will see uh, our Twitter account so please do subscribe uh, to us on Twitter and you're probably wondering what's the advantage or the benefit of being with us on Twitter so I tell you of course it's being directly connected uh, to our Facebook page so whenever you find an update you find something new coming up uh, you will get a direct uh, beep on your device your phone your iPads or whatever you're using and you will be in contact with us all around the clock so do subscribe and join us on Twitter as well and most importantly another way of communication and I do say the most important mode of communication and that is through YouTube dear viewers jump onto YouTube uh, and type in Huda TV and you will see our fantastic YouTube page I absolutely love it you can see all of our programs there especially the live streaming option it's so important we are a TV channel you have the option of watching all of our programs by the click of a button you can sit in the comfort of your own home press the button and watch everything absolutely free and enjoy it and you can also watch old programs that have been archived and enjoy them and you know something else which is uh, really beneficial is the fact that you can leave your comments on every video uh, live ones as well and get engaged with the discussion with other viewers with presenters with some of the scholars and everybody is free to express themselves without any kind of barrier so join us on YouTube and don't forget to subscribe encourage your friends encourage your families to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel and finally dear viewers you can also join us uh, via Skype our Skype address is as follows uh, Huda underscore TV you can join us on Skype so befriend us and we are usually green we are usually awake so you can join us and we can have a discussion or we can communicate and exchange ideas or try to answer some of your questions or your queries also um, on Skype so you have so many different ways in engaging with us on this fantastic channel Huda TV but it's now up to you to get involved if we have an hours long viewers uh, pulse we'd like to hear your thoughts like to hear your queries so do join us pick up your phones or if you're unable to get to your phone like I said you can always go to Facebook and I'm I have it open in front of me right now go to the official page which is a Huda TV and uh, I will read out your comments live in the studio and you can uh, people can hear your thoughts and your uh, expressions now dear viewers uh, we have the question of today every week we pose you a question we've had we've asked you what are the programs that you would like to see on Huda tonight what topics would you like to hear on let's talk but today's topic and today's topic is is very important why because it's connected to the Hajj season and that is just a couple of weeks away two weeks I think if I'm right and we will begin the preparations for the Hajj and the mood the atmosphere is going to change our friends and our families are going to go to the blessed land and do the rituals and their prayers so it's a very important a very blessed time so the question for today is as follows who would you like to see on Huda TV in the Hajj season so which particular speaker let's say scholars or callers to Islam or even presenters who would you like to see um, on uh, Huda TV during the Hajj season and presenting what exactly 
So it's now uh, it's up to you to call us and to give us your feedback. Join us on our Facebook page. It's absolutely free. Give us your comment, and I will read it out. If there's a particular presenter you would like to see, write their name down and give us your reasons why. If there's a particular scholar, uh, tell us as well why, and we can try to organize uh, those uh, programs. And do you know why we ask you these questions? Of course. It's because we want to improve ourselves and we also want to provide those programs that you want to see. We want to provide those speakers that you would like to hear from. So it's up to you. The more you input with us, the more we can produce and the more uh, either way, both of us, inshallah ta'ala, can work to the best of our ability. So I'm waiting for the first person to call me and I'm also waiting for the first person to drop a comment on our Facebook page. So until we get our first interaction. Uh, let me introduce you to our very first report of the week. Uh, it's on Quran uh, in depth and it's on the topic of the importance of prayer. And mashallah, uh, Quran in depth is an amazing program. We benefit from it so much looking at the analysis of different verses from the, uh, from the Quran. Let's look at this report and then when we come back I'll try to give a few words about it and also hear from you on what you think of this particular program. Let's watch this report together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to the companions of the Allah anhum and to the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if they would face the same situation, they're facing their enemies in the battlefield that they should not neglect their salah. Obligatory salah, the five daily salah, this is the life of the believers. There is nothing more important in their life after the tawheed, after the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship than their salah. And that this ayah and the like of it shows this very clearly. They are facing their enemies in the battlefield and they're still ordered to establish the salah. Not just to establish the salah or to do the salah, but to do it even in jama'ah, in congregation. And that's why many of uh, the ulama, when they took from this verse, the obligation of salatul jama'ah on men, that men they have to pray the fard prayer in congregation, not to pray alone. And when we see the life of the Prophet وسلم, he always prayed the fard salah in jama'ah, in congregation. He did not pray it alone, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is a call to our, own, to our own selves that we need to change the way we do things. For men, they need to pray in jama'ah, in congregation, in the masajid. And even if there are travelers, and there are a group of them, then they are also to pray in jama'at. The person is alone and there is no one with them and the salah time comes, then of course the obligatory salah to be established anyway. But to choose to pray alone when a person has the means and he's not sick and there's no excuses whatsoever, this is a matter where many of the ulama, they said that this is not permissible. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, the viewers, after watching that short report uh, talking about the importance of the prayer on our fantastic program, Quran in Depth. Now, Quran in Depth, you can watch the program live and it comes to you every Sundays, and that's at 7 p.m. Mecca time. I repeat that again 7 p.m. Mecca time. And if you want to watch the repeat or the rerun, that comes uh, at 2 a.m. Uh, in the night time. So, 7 p.m. for the live and 2 a.m. for the rerun. Now, dear viewers, when you listen to reminders talking about important subjects like the prayer, subhanAllah, it should make our hearts shake. It should make our minds uh, wake up the fact that how negligent we are towards the prayer. We know that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us that the prayer is the pillar of our faith. It's the most important aspect of our faith. Not just that, but we also taught the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that the prayer is the very first question we are going to be asked on the Day of Judgment. When we're standing in front of Allah, like we made mention before, naked, barefooted, uncircumcised, in this, this description, which even the blessed wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah be pleased with her, she couldn't comprehend. It was too much for her. Even then, uh, the very first question you're going to be asked is about your prayers. So I remind all of us gently that we need to focus on our prayers. We need to be more serious with our prayers. We need to make the prayer the most important aspect of our day. 
and the most hardest prayers no one will deny I will be the first one to admit the most hardest prayer is the Fajr prayer in the morning waking up at that early time especially if you have to go to work or school and then you have to make wudu in the cold weather it's difficult we all understand it's difficult but you know this is the deen of Allah this is what he is asking of us we should make it a priority to wake up at these times and to pray our prayers on their times now dear viewers let's move over to our second report and the second report is coming to us from gardens uh, of the pious with Sheikh Muhammad Salah and he is talking about another very serious a uh, very scary matter actually and that is the questioning that's going to take place inside of our graves let's listen to what the Sheikh says and then when we come back uh, we can get some comments <laughs> And in the grave with the angels, Munkar and Nakia, the names of the two angels would test every person when they die. In the grave. So they will answer the questions easily. As for the wrongdoers, those who wrong themselves, those who disbelieved in Allah, they will go astray because they chose so. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam once and after burying one of his companions, they were all fixing to leave. He said, wait, wait, wait for what? We got the job done. We buried him. He said, Istaghfiru li akhikum fa'innahu al-ana yus'al wa salu allaha lahu al-tathbeet. This time is a very crucial time. When you bury somebody, do not dismiss right away. Do not hurry to leave. If you love this person, you better wait for 15 minutes, for half hour, as long as you can. Why? Because this time is the most difficult time. It is the judgment. It is the questioning. The Prophet ﷺ said, hang around and seek forgiveness for your brother because he's been questioned right now. The angels are questioning him right now. And ask Allah to keep him firm, to grant him the right answer. And the questions are easy, the questions are known, and there are only three questions. They're not like multiple choice questions or long list of questions, and you have to choose and guess. No, it's only three questions. Who is your Lord? What is your faith? And what do you say concerning the man whom Allah has sent to you? That's it. So if you know the answer, basically you know it, يعني, you believed and that, you followed that, you'll be saved. So the person would say, Rabbi Aqim because there is an experience of joy and delight. While for the wicked and the non-believers would say, Rabbi La Tuqim The angels will ask him, Man Rabbuk? La Adri. I don't know. Madinuk. La Adri. I don't know. As a matter of fact, there is a sect now, they call themselves La Adriya. They are agnostic. You know, they try to uh, play smart. They don't want to be called atheists. So that rather they, they call themselves that they are not certain. They don't know whether there is God or not. Now you will get to find out. Ladri, I don't know. And what do you say concerning this man? I don't know either. It will be said to him, Ladarita wa Latari, the angels will pray against him. Then once he sees his seat in hellfire, you say, Rabbi la tuqim sa'ata abada. These ahadith are all sound ahadith. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. Often watching that report from Gardens of the Pious uh, by Sheikh Muhammad Salah, talking about the very serious subject of the punishment uh, inside the grave. Dear viewers, when you hear about this subject, you can't help but feel scared. You can't help but get worried. But you know, at the same time, one needs to prepare. You know, how, what would you say to a person who was given an exam that consists of three questions? And the teacher at the same time gave this student the answers as well and told him, take your time and I will ask you the three questions in, a, in, in due course. Then the student comes at an exam time and he is unable or she is unable to answer these three uh, yet simple but very deep questions what would you say is the situation of the student does he deserve to be ex eternally happy or does he deserve some punishment 
It's very easy, my dear brothers and sisters. The questions are known to us. The answers are also known to us. All it is a matter of implementation. Taking this religion seriously. Knowing that when we hear the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling us about the events of the grave, talking about Munkar and Nakir and how they're going to approach us inside of the graves, we should take it very seriously and we should prepare ourselves to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Not just that, but the third Caliph of Islam, Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him, he would stand at the grave and he would cry. He would cry so much his beard would be full of tears. And then he would be asked, Ya Uthman, why are you crying so much? And he pointed towards the grave. And he said, if you pass this test, then the next test will be easier. And he used to cry. Dear viewers, how many times do we visit the graves? How many times do we contemplate upon the angels that are going to meet us inside the graves? And how many a times, just like the Sheikh mentioned, do we make dua for the people inside the graves? Many a times we forget this, uh, the concept of making dua for those that have passed away. This is from our tradition. This is from our culture, from our Islamic tradition, that we make dua for our deceased parents. Did we forget them? Dear viewers, let's move over uh, to our next report. And that comes to us uh, from our uh, program, Let's Talk, where we have fantastic discussions, debates, uh, soft debates, on topics which are relevant to what's going on the climate around us today let's move over to this next report where we are looking at a comparison between man-made laws and divine godly laws let's watch this and then we come back and get some comments as well in Slovenia there, there is a law um, or people are mostly, th there are some atheists and stuff. Most people, because marriages in Slovenia are really expensive and okay. there's a lot of paperwork, so they they live together, w a man and a woman, while, without being married. So right. uh, in Slovenian man-made laws or classical laws, that's not against the law. They even get the paperwork exactly like they're married, but they're not. Mm -hmm. Like if, if if a man dies, she gets the, she gets the house, she gets uh, whatever possessions he okay. made. In divine law or in Islam, that would be uh, a very, very. Uh, it would be a very, very, ba very bad thing called called zina. So if we put a classical law here and a divine law, so it's the same. You, you Muslims, they can't do this. Right. We can't even think of doing this. But they're doing it because classical law, it's 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 okay. They don't. It's not against the law. They even made a law that people can live together, and if they don't want to get married, it's okay. So. That's the problem. Okay, society yeah. has accepted. Yes, yeah, some s some societies have accepted this, so this is a problem. So, in if if we if we would uh, you know if we would implement uh, Islam on this, the, you know, some people m may not agree because okay. not not most people have money okay. to pay for marriages because and and all the paperwork. <laughs> so there's this is the problem. And just the point on that, I would like to interject is that, for example. I think people think when applying Sharia, especially living with non-Muslims, they feel like we're going to enforce something on them. <coughs> and I remind you of the example of Imam Malik in Medina, rahimahullah, when the Zoroastrians were practicing incest. Zoroastrians were marrying mum and, mm. mum and son, okay. and they were practicing incest, incest with each other. And Imam Malik was asked specifically on this. He said that it is ab abhorrent to our deen, but it's fine with them, leave them to it. Okay. And I feel mm -hmm. this is a very good, I think sometimes people feel like we must establish Sharia where we are, means we're going to enforce a kind of a code on people. When, it's, when their, their deen doesn't even um, prohibit this. So we're not, we're not enforcing things on people. I think that's the problem we face nowadays anyway. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, the viewers, after watching a very fruitful discussion uh, talking about Allah's law, the Sharia, and talking about man made laws and looking at the comparison between the two, and not just that, but also looking um, at what is more relevant today and I think unanimously everybody agreed that the divine law uh, is far superior as it is universal for all places and all times and as it comes from our creator who knows better how do we live what do we need 
How can we be better human beings except for the fact that the Creator, the one who made you, the one who put you on this earth, knows you better than you knows uh, than you know yourself. So it's a very good discussion, and then discussion developed further, and we looked at the implementation. Like, how can we now, in the modern days that we live in today, in the very complex situations uh, or the complex environments of nation states, how can we now implement uh, God's law? Is it do we implement it uh, literally, as some people understand, or do we implement it in uh, in a more uh, looking at the objectives behind uh, God's law. So it's a very fruitful discussion and you can always go back and watch the repeat or go back onto YouTube and watch that as well. And Let's Talk, it comes to you every Mondays and it comes to you live at 7 p.m. That's Mecca time and the rerun is at 2 a.m. So 7 p.m. every Mondays, uh, Mecca time, that's live and 2 p.m. is the rerun. So do join us on that fantastic uh, program let's talk and also give us your views uh, on these subjects dear viewers our phone lines are open so we encourage you again to pick up your phones call us here uh, in the studio and tell us about the things that you have seen do you enjoy them what's been the best part what would you recommend how can we improve ourselves these are all questions we put forward uh, to yourself uh, dear viewers, I'd also like to remind you of our question uh, for the day and the question as is on your screens is who would you like to see uh, on Huda TV during uh, the Hajj season. So, dear viewers, do get engaged with us and tell us. We're only a couple of weeks away, I think two weeks if I'm right, uh, then the season will start and everything is going to change. The atmosphere is going to change, the mood is going to change, the, everything you see on social media, television, everything is going to change and you will see people in the millions coming from all over the globe coming to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying their very best to fulfill this obligation that, has, that Allah has put on every able uh, Muslim so do tell us what would you like to see during this month who would you like to see uh, from amongst the scholars and who would you like to see from amongst the presenters so give us your ideas and give us your thoughts dear viewers let's take a short break here and then when we come back uh, we'll continue to look at some of our programs and also get to hear from yourselves and get to read some of your comments as well on Facebook. So I'll see you all uh, in just a few moments. <laughs> It's calling us to establish this hiwa, this dialogue between ourselves and between the non-Muslims, to use hikmah. The waves are coming, you're trapped. Fitna every is coming everywhere. How, how can I get out of this fitna that I'm in? Uh, send me the rope. Why did Allah send the Quran to you, to all of mankind? As a source of guidance, as a, as a kitab, a blessed book to be reflected upon. And secondly, the bath, the resurrection. Prepare yourself for your Qiyamah when you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Aqeedah, this is the Qur of Aqeedah, this is the focus of the Qur'an. They want these dialects and these slangs to spread so the Arabs themselves can't even understand the Qur'an properly. This is, a this is a choice you have to make now. Because once the angel of death comes to you and takes your soul, there's no turning back, there's no other choice. This is the Dean Show. 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 So from that, I've really come to understand that to be a Muslim, to be someone who says they've surrendered and submitted to the will of God, is to be in harmony with everything around you and to be a benefit to everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, he gave us a life plan. He told us what to do. He, he gave us, you know, goals and what he expects from us. It has roots in Islam because the first man who was created, Adam, he was neither a Jew or a Christian, but he submitted himself to God, Abraham. He didn't submit to anyone in creation. He didn't even hear in any of these religions. But when he was told to do what? Submit to the will of God. That's it's not attached to his preconceived notions. Yes. And if he looks with an objective eye and an open heart, he'll see it. Unless Allah for some reason has something over his eyes because of something that we don't know is in his heart. 
uh, you had from 1980 to 2005, you had the FBI data report showing that now from all these years that only 6% had any links to uh, Islam. 94% were people who had nothing to do with Islam. Hoda TV strives to remain the premier English language Islamic channel in the world. And to do so, we need your input. Send us your thoughts, suggestions and feedback through email at feedback at hoda.tv. Hoda TV is committed to helping others. So why not help Hoda TV share the message of Islam worldwide? Take part in helping spread the authentic message of Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah throughout the world by sponsoring Hoda TV. Don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the reward from Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, joining us live on our program, Viewers Pulse. And we have a number of different reports that we've gone through, and we've got a few more coming as well. And we've got a question that we would like for all of you to get involved in. And mashallah, over the break, I was checking our Facebook page, and we have a number of different contributions uh, coming from different people talking about uh, their uh, input, what they would like to see. The question is, and hopefully you'll see it on your screens, the question is, who would you like to see on Huda TV during the fantastic, beautiful Hajj season? Which scholars would you like to see? Which presenters would you like to see? Put your questions or your comments on our Facebook page. And if you're able to get to your phones, pick up your phone, call me here live in the studio, and inshallah ta'ala, I will welcome uh, whatever it is that you bring to the table. So, dear viewers, we have a number of reports as well coming in this particular part of the program. Uh, for amongst those, we'll be moving to uh, a program by the name of Ask Huda. Now, Ask Huda is a fantastic program uh, that comes to us every uh, Sundays and Tuesdays. Sundays and Tuesdays, that's 9 p.m. Mecca time, and the rerun uh, is at 1 uh, p.m. Uh, in one, uh, sorry, one uh, so that's 1 p.m. That's correct. So you have the choices there, and you can watch Ask Huda there live, or you can watch the rerun. Now, the beautiful thing about Ask Huda is the fact that you have Sheikh Muhammad Salah, and he uh, answers your questions live in the studio. Any question you like, and he does a fantastic job. So it's your chance to be direct one and on with the Sheikh. Now, let's watch this report, and then when we come back, uh, we'll hopefully read out some of your comments and also look at further reports as well. The media keep bombarding people's minds in order to take these actions against Muslims. And then they play innocent. They are criminals. They are totally responsible for that. You see what happened when a priest got killed in Europe? The whole world condemned terrorism and right away there is a flag, Islamic terrorism. But when two imams got shot in the head in New York City, they call it a hate crime. And it's just a homicide. No one would say anything more than that about it. It's a challenge. I'd like to begin by saying, this is Hisham, and to my wife, and to every Muslim sister, and to every Muslim brother, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when he predicted that بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَأ فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاء Islam in its beginning it was a very strange ideology, strange religion, strange faith even though it invited people and called them to modesty, to monotheism, to what makes sense, to what is logical but people perceived it as a strange religion and Muslims started growing in number, started growing in faith, become powerful. They conquered Mecca and increased uh, to cover the peninsula. But the Prophet said, The curve is going like that. And by the end, Muslims would be perceived as strangers. And especially those who are holding tight on their deen. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, Tuba, Tuba is one of the names of paradise for them. That may Allah the Almighty send them to paradise. May Allah reward them with heaven for their steadfastness. Which time is it? It's a very difficult time. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the, the, the reward of such people who are living during these turbulent times will be greater than a reward of some of the companions who are living with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when it comes to a life threat, one has to be very careful. Choice number one, Hijrah. To make Hijrah to where you can practice your deen. Because again, it is not about the niqab, Mrs. Hisham. It's about hijab as well. They're going crazy now. They're going crazy against any Islamic symbol. Again, it's anything that is Islamic. So if there is a possibility, and I know your next question, and the question of perhaps everyone who's watching me and saying, name a Muslim country that I can make hijrah to. I know it is difficult, but I'm saying that for some who may have a chance, then this is a priority. But if there is not a chance, then you need to save your life. So whenever it is a matter of life threat, and if you think that simply removing the niqab will save you and spare your life, that's a necessity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. After watching that report from Art Khuda and a very sensitive discussion there with Sheikh Muhammad Salah talking uh, about the difficulties that Muslims are facing, uh, especially in the Western world, as minorities in a uh, non Muslim majority environment. Now, dear viewers, we all know the situation and how Muslims are being treated, uh, not just in France, where the hijab. The niqab is being banned, uh, even the, the issues of the burkini is being banned. Everything is being banned for, for the Muslims inside of France. Not just that, if you go into other European countries, you find uh, that the minarets are being banned. Anything that resembles Islam outwardly uh, is being attacked. Just like the Sheikh Hosa said, if you take a trip to America, which is the land of the free, you find there the Imam walking out of the masjid, absolutely innocent, doing nothing but remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was shot down. For what reason? Except that uh, he was a Muslim. It's not just that, dear viewers. It's not just a random event. But even if you look at you know some of the potential presidential candidates and listen to what they have to say about Muslims and about other who people from other ethnic backgrounds and how they should be treated uh, you would be surprised that in the modern world uh, these people are allowed to say what they say and not just that but they have so much support it's absolutely shocking to find how a person can be so racist so outwardly uh, uh, horrible to so many different people minorities especially the muslims and yet be able to prosper and succeed amongst uh, such a large number of people dear viewers we as muslims across the globe be it in the muslim countries or be it in western countries we've got to wake up we've got to start to smell the coffee the ground under us is not that safe the grass is not that green We've got to start to realize that our future, our children's future is at stake. We need to come together. We need to, number one, unite. We need to learn how to protect our rights as Muslims wherever we are. We live in a country, the country has laws, and we are able to use these laws and use the system to our benefit. We can get those who are representing us to really protect our rights if we put pressure on them, if we learn how to be effective in the society that we live in. Dear viewers, it's very important we do that for Muslims all across the globe uh, and, and if we really are looking into the future uh, for our children. And that's Ask uh, Huda, that as mentioned before, that comes twice a week, every Sundays and Tuesdays. 9 p.m. is the live time, uh, Mecca time, and the repeat is at 1 p.m. Dear viewers, let's move over to our next uh, report, which comes to us from our live program, daily uh, night program, which is Huda Tonight. Let's move over to this report, uh, where we are looking at recent events that took place inside of Turkey. Everybody saw on their social media where there was a coup taking place inside of Turkey, which failed uh, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look at this report, and then when we come back, uh, get your feedback and get my feedback on the subject as well. Uh, the uh, 
Turkish national intelligence um, organizations, one of the um, top in the world, and they discovered the, the attempt. Uh, so they basically, um, by releasing information, a lot of other organizations uh, were on their guard. So the military coup had to rush itself to be ahead, I think, of a scheduled time, about six hours. So that created a chaos. Uh, within the uh, uh, group that are organizing it. Uh, secondly, the head of the coup um, uh, basically was uh, killed by a junior officer uh, who discovered it, and I think he was trying to you know, buy him into the group. He re rejected mm -hmm. and he killed him. Mm -hmm. uh, that also created uh, a breakdown in a command mm -hmm. uh, in the coup. Thirdly, uh, the people themselves. They've tried the military rule. Uh, they've seen um, how it works, and basically they stood. And uh, uh, there was, uh, you know, a number of, uh, you know, scenes uh, uh, on, on TV and uh, on the Internet. You'll see that people use their own cars to stop uh, tanks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, blocking the roads right. to stop the, the movements. It was amazing. Uh, of yeah. yeah. So uh, here, uh, to look at the military coup or the attempt, to take over power in Turkey, uh, we need to look at it uh, from the economic side, social side, and the political side, and also from the people side. There was no reason whatsoever uh, for that. There was no, uh, uh, you know, the countries are not in crisis. Uh, that's, that's briefly uh, uh, the situation there. Uh, whether Erdogan is trying to gain some political benefits out of that by asking the United States to extra extradite uh, um, uh, Gulen, mm. uh, that's something else. You know, that's a political game. Uh, maybe Gulen is not involved. I, I, don't, I don't know. We can't really hmm. uh, determine that. But uh, definitely um, Erdogan is trying to gain some uh, benefits out of it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, after watching a short report on our live program, which is Huda tonight, uh, where we got to see uh, a discussion about the events that took place inside of Turkey. Now, dear viewers, Huda tonight is a fantastic program. It's live, and you can see it every single day except for Fridays and Saturdays. So the timings of that is 10.30 uh, p.m. Mecca time, and the repeat comes on at 2 p.m. Uh, Mecca time as well. Join us every night for fantastic discussions. The discussions range from politics uh, to social affairs to religious affairs, everything. So there's an array or a mix of topics. Going back to the subject as well that was discussed uh, inside of that report, the professor there makes some very valid and some very important points. And we should all think about and contemplate on these issues. Now, the situation that took place there, and the doctor, he said that it, the, one of the reasons to why that attempt failed was because of the people. Because the people themselves were aware, the people themselves were educated, the people themselves had respect for themselves, and they were not going to allow for events like this to take place and to destroy their country, to destroy the things that they have worked hard for, to destroy the successful economy. So they came together in their own cars with their own efforts and they sacrificed their lives as well for the sake of their future, for the sake of their freedom. And that's an essential element that we should all remember at all times. Whenever there is any such event like that, one should always think about uh, himself and herself. And I understand we have a phone call. And uh, okay, we have uh, Sister Zubayba calling us from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, sister? Alhamdulillah. I was going to say uh, about the system. Sure, go ahead. Okay, you mean among the students who represent this or just any Muslim speaker? Sure, so who would you like to see in the Hajj season? I will be okay with you. Yeah. I, I didn't hear you, sorry. We'll be also with you, like keeping us up to date during the hot season. Or uh, if you mean um, uh, among the Muslim people, if we can get Norman and Khan, it will be great. Okay. Is good, yeah. Okay. Is there a, is there any particular speaker that you really like? I I, I said Norman and Khan. Oh, Norman and Khan. Okay, that's great. 
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sister Zubeba. We appreciate your phone call all the way from Nigeria. Dear viewers, pick up your phones and give us your suggestions and give us your answers to the question as well. A big thank you going out to Sister Zubeba for her participation. So, first participation, the first person, Numan Ali Khan. Fantastic. So, we're going to have to get in contact with him and make some arrangements and see uh, what we can come up with. Let me read to you a comment as well that comes to us on our Facebook page uh, on the same question, who would you like to see in the month of, uh, in the month of uh, Hajj? Sorry. Uh, and which presenters or which uh, speakers would you like to see? We have a comment coming to us from Kamal Muhammad Gambo, and he says, I would like to see Mufti Ismail Musa Mink. MashaAllah, Mufti Mink. And he writes that I like to see him because he is so intelligent. I achieve a lot through him, uh, through him uh, not even me alone, including the non Muslims. So he's wanting to see uh, Mufti Mink, and he says he benefits so much from it. That's very good, uh, excellent. So we've got two. Uh, uh, potentials here. We've got Noman Ali Khan coming from Sister Zubayba and we've got uh, Mufti Mink coming from Brother uh, Kamal. There are some more comments but we're going to come to those comments uh, after watching our next report which is uh, Quran Circle 2. Let's watch this report. When we come back we'll have some comments. We'll read your uh, post as well on Facebook and don't forget the question is who would you like to see on Huda TV during the Hajj period? Let's watch this report and then we'll come back. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ آيَاتٍ مُبَيْنَاتٍ وَمَثَلًا وَمَثَلًا مِنَ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمَوْعِظَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ اللَّهُ نُورُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يوقد من شجرة مباركة يوقد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله و 
والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, after watching uh, that short report on Quran Circle 2, which was aired last Ramadan. And you can watch uh, the repeats of those on YouTube. You can pluck those programs out and you can enjoy uh, the recitation there by our Sheikh Abdul Khaliq. And really, subhanAllah, his voice is absolutely amazing. When you listen to his recitation, you feel so much comfort. You feel so much peace uh, listening to him and uh, really it's a program that we need to go back and watch and take benefit from um, as well. And don't forget Abdul Khaliq, uh, as you are aware, our Sheikh is a me one who has memorized the Holy Quran and at the same time you know that he is blind. Allah has given him that facility, that blessing to memorize the book of Allah and he does not have the faculty of seeing. Yet Allah has given me and you our five senses and how much of the Quran have we memorized? How much input have we struggled? And how much have we put forward uh, in Allah's cause? You know, many a times, and it's sad to say, but it's a reality. How many of people have memorized songs or memorized poems or memorized textbooks? But yet the Quran is waiting for you. The Quran is waiting for you to get involved. Dear viewers, let's get more serious with the Quran and let's also uh, uh, read it on a regular basis and enjoy these programs. Dear viewers, I want to now uh, read to you some other comments that you've given to us on our Facebook page about the question, who would you like to see um, during the uh, Hajj period? And we have a, a response from Jibra'il uh, Suhaiba, and he writes, uh, if you mean amongst the Huda TV presenters, we personally, personally, I am fine with you keeping us up to date during the Hajj season because mashallah you are doing a great job Allahumma barik fiq so mashallah uh, brother Jibrail uh, would like to see myself and that's a very positive very pleasing comment thank you very much uh, that makes me smile uh, and I appreciate your 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 uh, comment there but he goes on and he says except if you mean other Muslim speakers no man Ali Khan if that's possible and he said he is very explicit in explaining issues vocal in uh, issues and most importantly he passes the message across so Jibreel would once again he would like to see uh, Noman Ali Khan so we've got two votes for Noman Ali Khan we've got one vote for uh, 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 Mufti Mink and also mashallah I managed to get a vote in there as well so that's great so inshallah ta'ala we will try our very best to get these programs going and uh, the management and those of the producers will get the messages and inshallah ta'ala bring forward some fantastic programs uh, during the Hajj during the Hajj uh, period. So uh, we've got a phone call. Excellent. So who's on the line? Assalamu alaikum. Okay, we have Sister Shabana. Sorry, I, I apologize. Brother Shabana calling us from the KSI. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing, Sister? Alhamdulillah. Very good. Uh, sure. Would you like to answer our question? And, uh, yeah, we have, alhamdulillah, we have many uh, Muslim scholars in the fraternity. But the one I like to see, there are many in the list. It's Mom, uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah, Dr. Zakir Naik, uh, Mufti Ismail Mank, then uh, Sheikh Shari Suleiman. Then okay. um, from Australia, we have Muhammad Hablus, Noman Ali Khan. There are many in the list. And Yasir Khadi, and there, these are the eloquent speakers, and I follow them a lot. Okay, so thank you. Sure. Okay, that's great. So those speakers, any preference? Would you like to see any particular speakers presenting your programs? Uh, it looks like Sister Shabana Dr. has... Noman Ali Khan. Okay, in particular, uh, Noman Ali Khan. That's great. Thank you very much, Sister. Uh, for your phone call, we appreciate your uh, response there. Sister Shabana calling us all the way from the KSA and making a list of speakers that she would like to see from Mufti Mink to Noman Ali Khan. Once again, Masha Noman Ali Khan is very popular. So we need to get him in the studio. We need to get some programs uh, with him as well. I'd like to give a very big special thank you to all of you who have joined us on our programs, viewers pulse, especially those uh, that have called in. We appreciate that as well, Sister uh, Zubeba. 
uh, Sister uh, Shabana as well. Big thank you to both of you and to those who contributed as well on Facebook. Thank you very much. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we will have viewers polls at the same time at the same place with new reports, with a new question. So do remain active with us. Answer the questions as well and we can take our program from there. So thank you very much. I ask Allah to give you a blessed week and we will see you next time uh, at the same time at the same place. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember, you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember, you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home.